Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name is Lauren and today I'm going to be giving you all the tips and tricks and hacks that you need to start sublimating. Now, if you are a sublimation beginner, then this is hopefully gonna take you from a beginner to an expert. If you have been sublimating for years, really this video is we are just like compiling all of the tips, tricks, and hacks that we have in multiple different videos into one so that you have one video you can reference back to. If you enjoy our videos and all of the content that we create for you guys, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell notification so you can be notified every time we go live or every time we bring you a new craft. Now, let's get started going over all of these tips, tricks, and hacks that you need to start sublimating. So, I'm gonna be starting with the beginner thing. Number one, first thing you always need to do is make sure to mirror your image. Now, there are a couple ways that this can be done, depending on what software you use. A lot of times you can mirror your image on your printer settings, or if you are using Canva, you can flip it horizontally. Same thing with Design Space. There are multiple different ways that you can mirror your image, but you always want to make sure before you print that you mirror your image. So one little hack that I want to show you guys kind of moves us into tip number two, which is using your correct print settings. Now getting your printer set up can be difficult. However, with Makers Gonna Sublimate, we teach you how to set up your printer, whether you are converting an EcoTank, using an Epson Sure Color, a Workforce, using a Sawgrass printer. We teach you how to set that up and set up your printer settings. So now what I want to do is I want to hop over to our share screen so I can show you this hack with the print settings or with your printer settings from Design Space. Now that we're in Design Space, we have this in here and I pulled in a file that has um, words on it so we can see the difference. Now if you wanted to, you can flip this here Bada bing, bada boom, done. It's ready to print. However, if you just want to go ahead and print this, so we are going to turn this into a print and cut, first of all. Then we're going to hit make it. From there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to printer and I'm going to use the system dialog. I'm turning bleed off using system dialog. So now I'm going to print this. What it does is it pulls up behind here. You're going to come in here. I'm going to select our workforce series. Now, it's always going, the presets are always going to go to your default settings. So you want to turn your print quality to best, feed from rear tray or main tray, whichever you prefer, um, but you will need to select one of those. Media type, go ahead and change to photo matte paper. Then we're going to go from media and quality to layout. Layout, you can flip it horizontally, which mirrors your image. Once you have changed all of that, what you're gonna do now is come up here. You are going to save current settings as preset, and then you can change your name here. Now you can set that as your preset, the default that always pops up when you're using that sublimation printer. That way your image always mirrors. My third tip for you guys today is to always use high quality images when you are sublimating. If you don't, what's gonna happen is the image that you print is going to be pixelated, which then translates over to the blank that you are sublimating on. Thankfully, Makers Gonna Learn always offers high quality images that you can use, especially in our Makers Gonna Sublimate course. Here in the Makers Gonna Sublimate course, you can go to your first module, come down here to the Makers Gonna Sublimate designs, and you can see we have downloaded all of our Makers Gonna Sublimate files. You can open them up. There are alphabets, all different kinds. There are over 200 different files within this that you can use alphabets, photos, very high quality swatches that you can cut and slice different images into. So there are so many different designs you can use and we are actually in the process of adding more. Not only that, the sublimation files that we have in the course are already set up to sublimate, but our print and cut images on our website in our files that we release are also set up to print so that you can sublimate them. Tip number four, always use some type of heat resistant tape or adhesive to keep your image down on what you are sublimating. This could include 
heat resistant tape. They also have a heat resistant adhesive spray that I have heard works great. Personally, we have not used it yet. However, we will be testing that out for future reference, but you always want to make sure you use something that keeps your image adhered or down on your blank so that it does not move and give you ghosting. Now what ghosting is and what it does is you can see here on this side and on this side, it kind of just gives it a fuzzy or a double image look. So when you tape it down um, it, and lay your blank flat, it gives you more of a really clean, crisp image. Number five, when in doubt, butcher paper it out. Always, you always want to make sure that you use butcher paper, whether it is on your heat press, if you are using a tumbler and you're not doing a full wrap, you can wrap it in butcher's paper, but butcher's paper is going to be your best friend when it comes to sublimation. What butcher paper does is it creates a barrier between your sublimation paper and blank and your heat source, and that way it catches all of the extra ink and all of the extra water so that it doesn't get on your heat source and transfer to other blanks. So what sublimation is, is it is an ink, a dye ink that you print on paper and then once it heats up, it, turns, it then turns into a gas. So the reason you have to have some type of um, poly blend shirt or something with a polymer coating is because that heat source heats it into a gas that gas then adheres to those polymers in your blank that you are sublimating on and then it sticks and it never moves. So that gas can sometimes escape and will sometimes get on your heat source if you do not use butcher paper. But what butcher paper does is it kind of traps it there so that it doesn't go anywhere else. Tip number six, you can actually use copy paper in some instances rather than a sub sublimation paper. So we have copy paper and a sub sublimation paper here on our table. Um, with certain designs, you will have to use a sub, but we have found that if you are sublimating on a 100% polyester shirt, you can use copy paper. It really tends to give us a just as good of a high quality image as this a sub sublimation paper does. However, with some different blanks, if it is a blank that has a harder surface, I have found that a sub paper still tends to work better, but you can save money and use copy paper on some textiles. Number seven, this is tear the edge of your papers. So what this does, if you have an image on here, you don't want to cut it out because when you take this and you press it on your blank, those edges will sometime cre sometimes create creases on your blank. However, if you tear your edges, it makes them a lot softer. So you can tear the edges around your image instead of cutting. That way it does not leave a line on your blank. Tip number eight is to use lamination sheets on different materials such as canvas. Um, I have actually used this on a notebook so that you can sublimate on different things. One example that I have here this is just a plain paperback notebook that you can buy in bulk on Amazon. And what I have done is I have taken a lamination sheet, put it on the front, and then sublimated um, a, a piece of artwork onto this notebook. Tip number nine is using Cricut Design Space, a software that you may be familiar with to design your image. And then there are a couple different ways that you can take that image and turn it into a sublimation file. So we're gonna hop over into Design Space and I'm gonna show you how to. So now that we're here in Design Space, I'm going to take this file, I'm just going to add an offset, we're going to apply it, I'm going to change the color. I really think I want this bright lime green. Maybe like right in here, yeah. So then we're going to select this both, we're going to flatten it. Now, if you don't wanna go through the process of the print and cut image, what you can do now is you can take a screenshot of this. So if you're on a Mac, you're going to select Command Shift 4. Now that brings up this little pixel tool and what you will do is you'll take it, drag the box around it, let it go and it takes a screenshot. If you are on a PC, 
you can go to your finder or to your start home area, search snippet tool. The snippet tool does the exact same thing. Once you have taken the screenshot, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, you can then upload it into Canva and there you can resize it. Now, if you don't want to do that, you're not familiar with Canva, you don't feel comfortable with it, you can go to make it. And then from there, we're going to hit continue. We are going to send to printer, turn bleed off, use system dialog, and then hit print. So what's going to happen now is it's going to come here. We're going to pull this up down here in the left corner where it says PDF. You can either save it as a PDF and then resize it, whatever, or you can open it in preview. So here we are going to open here we're going to open this in preview. Then we are going to print from here. Now this gives us the option to scale this. Currently it is at 100%. If you wanted to scale it up to make it bigger, you can go back, do 120%. However, the only thing is you cannot reposition. When it is here, you cannot reposition. You can also change your paper size. So if we were wanting to print on um, 13 by 19, we can. So the only problem with this is you cannot move this around. However, you can change your, letter, your paper size. So if you are printing on like 13 by 19, you can change that and it is going to make this is on 13 by 19 paper so it is scaled up to 120 percent and you can make it even bigger so let's just say 200 percent and see what that is still a little big so we're going to go down to 180. so once you have that size to the way that you want it then you can go ahead and send it to your printer and you're good to go tip number 10 is to use shrink wrap on your tumblers if you are using a convection oven. Now, we have a lot of friends that always ask us, well, what if we have a um, press, a tumbler press? Guys, if you have a tumbler press, you do not have to use the shrink wrap. What's gonna happen is that shrink wrap is going to melt onto your press. So the reason we are using a, the shrink wrap in the oven is because we want to give that sublimation tumbler a nice hug all the way around it because that keeps that image really tight up against your blank. The mug press or the tumbler press, if you have one, does that for you. Now, we personally don't recommend using a Cricut mug press for tumblers. You can do that, but you have a lot of room for error and it really is hard. You have to press it on this side, turn it, press it here, flip it upside down, press it on one side and press it on the other. Y'all, if you have a convection oven, which a lot of times you can find at a thrift store, at a yard sale, you can find them secondhand, um, get them on sale. Do not buy a um, full price unless you just have to have it right then. Wait out, try to find it cheaper somewhere else. The good thing, although the mud press works but takes a lot of time, the good thing with the convection oven is it's literally two minutes on each side. So two minutes this side, flip it, two minutes this side, and it sublimates beautifully. What the shrink wrap does and why it is so important with the convection oven, once again, it gives it a hug. So we've talked about how the sublimation ink turns into a gas. If there is a gap with your paper, any little gap, what's going to happen is once that is turned into a gas, if you guys know, gases like to bounce off of each other. So those gases are gonna bounce off each other until they find their home, which is the polymer coating on this cup. So if it's not right there, so it can't go from point A to point B with no movement, then it's going to bounce off of each other and they're going to find their home somewhere away from A to B. So what it's gonna do is it's going to create that fuzzy effect. So that's what the shrink wrap does is it makes that super tight so it doesn't move and those gases can go from A to B with no movement. Tip number 11 is also talking about tumblers since we're talking about tumblers. Once you have sublimated whether it's in your 
a tumbler press or a convection oven, once you have sublimated, our biggest tip is to dunk this in ice water. I'm talking straight out of the press, straight out of the oven, obviously using your heat resistant glove, grab your tumbler, have some ice, a tub of ice water ready, dunk it in there. What happens is that cools it down and it stops the sublimation process. Now, might I add, this is only recommended for stainless steel tumblers. We do not recommend this for ceramic mugs or glass cans because you all know those materials, if they heat up and then cool down too fast, they will crack and break. So we only recommend the ice water bath if you are using a stainless steel tumbler. Tip number 12 is using a heat gun for spot sublimation. Now there are some instances where you are going to have a design that you may have, the seamless pattern may be a little harder. It's not going to be a straight line. So if you have like, we had a terrazzo cup where we just had different spots um, on our cup. We wanted to piece that together. What you can do is you can sublimate it and then have those little pieces of pebble or the pieces of your design, lay them down, tape them down, and then use your heat gun to kind of spot sublimate each one so that you have a true seamless design. Tip number 13 is to make sure that you periodically clean your heat source. Now to do this, obviously your heat source needs to be off. You do not need to do this while it is warm, while it is hot. Our best advice is to use some type of degreaser. Now here we just have the Mean Green Super Strength Cleaner and Degreaser. What that's gonna do is it's going to loosen up the particles that are on your heat source and allow you to wipe those away very easily. Now, if there are particles that are stuck on there really hard, what you can do is take some type of silicone spatula and try to rub, scrape those off. Um, but really, if you can't, just let that sit with a degreaser and it should be able to do most of the work for you so that you can just wipe it off. It's very important that you do this because if you don't, you may get transfer from one sublimation product to the next, making it not as clean, not as crisp, and it really kind of ruins your project. My last two tips and tricks for you guys are about the DTF powder with sublimation. So what this is, this is the direct to film powder and the films that you can print on using your sublimation printer, and this allows you to sublimate on 100% cotton. So first of all, using this and printing on the, not the shiny side, but the matte side, and you will probably have to use a carrier sheet to pull this through your printer. We have a full video on how to do this, um, but this is a really good hack to have in case you want to use shirts that are 100% cotton. Maybe somebody, one of your customers is allergic to polyester or different synthetic materials or they just cannot stand the feel of it. This is a great way to sublimate on 100% cotton for other people and for yourself. And then finally, the very last tip about that is when you are sublimating with the DTF, always have a cooling source, whether that is a window, a cold tabletop or something handy, a cooling block to cool down your design before you peel. I hope you have enjoyed these 15 tips, tricks, and hacks on sublimation. If you want to learn more, make sure to take out, check out Makers Gonna Sublimate, where we teach, go into so much detail about sublimation and really turn you into a pro. Can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye.